They were confused by it, right? And it is confusing as to who's going to do what and what you're going to be responsible for after it's done and who's responsible for it. Sheila Craig was already well involved in it, already had a plan um, to how it was going to go and who was going to do uh, uh, the, she was filling out the applications. So, you know, I started working with her and getting the applications all filled out and she did all of the hard work filling out the applications dealing with the county dealing with the lawyers all of the stuff that it was like even as a builder i wouldn't know how to do that and the ordinary citizen would not know the process it would be very difficult uh, she, she had experience with this with a couple of others before she came here so she kind of knew people in the area uh, commercial people who could come in and put this in and it was like okay once it got started it was like how are they really going to do that are we, we're at the end of the road and how are we going to get home they they directional board it so sometimes you had to stop and wait for the trucks to get out of the way but they did not interrupt our lives a tremendous amount and uh, they we got uh, part of it was paid for by a grant from uh, the DNR and the government and all that kind of stuff. And then they arranged to have the rest of it is paid for through our taxes. They collect it with our taxes. And I think we have a 20 year, a 20 year payout for it. And then there's every year there's a maintenance fee that we pay. Right now it's, it's a little steep, but in the beginning they need to get a a chunk buffer in case we have something that needs to be fixed because the association actually owns the whole system. As we went through the project, we had, we had a very good leader uh, and in, in the township setting, we all had our part of the project that we did, and we didn't try to micromanage each other. We went through and did it, and uh, got everybody informed, and, uh, and there was, for instance, uh, income surveys, whatever had to be done. Uh, the township picked up the cost of all them so that we could arrive at a certain point in this project that says this is what it's going to cost you as a resident because that's what matters most is cost of course. Pretty much everybody took the option of uh, putting it on their tax statement, real estate, real estate tax statement and uh, making a payment on their system twice a year. So the interest rate was one and a half percent. So when we made it that affordable, uh, it was it, it was really agreeable then. And then um, we had we had good bids from good engineers and and uh, people that were going to do this, do the work, and we actually knew the people that were going to do the work. You know. Well, it, it was done in, in months, you know, they started it in the summer. Um, I think it's much, much like the one we're started now. It was started a week ago. They said it'll be operational in November. Oh, wow. I didn't really get involved until it was determined and, and until the board decided to set up a committee. So I'm part of that committee that's it's called the sewer committee, for lack of finding a better word. Um, and there's about 10 of us and we've been meeting regularly for three years and we've been studying everything. I and mean, we studied the kind of how to treat a, a septic tank so you don't have to, you know, don't, aren't abusing it to what kind of systems are available and what kind of systems might work best for our community. And we've been working with an engineer who, um, who has 
been very helpful and very, um, I, I guess I should say creative in how he could build a package plant that would um, fit in a smaller area and do what we want it to do and be compliant and all that. So we have lots of different ideas on how to fix things and how to do things and there's, you know, some people think it's not broke, don't fix it, let's leave it. Um, and so there's a few people, education-wise, who don't really know or understand how really non-compliant their system is. And we've worked on that. We're working on it. And I think it's, I think we've got, I think we're coming a long ways. I really do. But every, it's sort of like it's one step forward and then back. I think our biggest challenge anyway is to find a location for a site. Um, and then after that, you have to go and try to, find what kind of a system will fit in that site and then try to um, get your people really able to get behind you. And so we, um, we talked to going together with La Crescent, which is maybe 10 miles down the road. But La Crescent wanted to um, annex and our people in this little community really didn't want to annex with La Crescent. Um, the cost is another area we talked to them. Uh, it would be very expensive to pipe it to La Crosse. And um, so we've got maybe two spots here in this community that we can use. And one of them is right up across from me. It's just a little parking lot. Um, it would only be big enough for a package plant. And package plants are all enclosed. They're, the, the odor is contained actually because of the way it's treated. There just isn't odor. Um, you have maybe a few little pipes and a minimal amount of, of exposure that would be visible to the uh, person who's walking through that little site. But it also leads you, lends you to an opportunity for um, landscaping to sort of blend it in in any way. But then, you know, then we had some people who didn't want to be, think they wanted to have their house that close to a sewage, sewage system no matter what kind it was because there's the educational part of it just didn't quite make it for some people. So we're kind of on our own in a small little area with really limited um, space. We have now been uh, we're kind of excited about another space that's been brought up that actually belongs to the um, Minnesota DOT and they use it for storage of all sand and gravel and their maintenance, I think it's called a maintenance area and they have decided or, or agreed that there's a portion of that that we could have which would take it farther a little bit farther south from where the residences are here eventually uh, we uh, we contacted uh, uh, Cannon River, or Cannon River contacted uh, some of us. I can't remember exactly how that came about, but we received a lot of help from Cannon River on uh, about uh, similar projects that were done in other counties. And, and then we uh, eventually formed a uh, uh, sewer district within the Roberts Lake Sewer District uh, under county government and uh, pursued uh, uh, plans to uh, uh, connect to the city of Faribault, met with city officials and uh, uh, eventually drew up an agreement between the city and, uh, of Faribault and uh, the uh, county to service this district. Mm -hmm. We had a, a group that got together that uh, uh, the Tumas were part of that, myself, and uh, there were several other residents who uh, started, started talking about this and we eventually started uh, holding some public meetings to explain to other residents of the lake what, what the concept was. So we weren't uh, 
we weren't pioneering here in a way, but uh, so we received assistance from their experiences, and and uh, then Cannon River was very instrumental in helping us uh, get funding. It's it's hard to say when it started, <laughs> you know, because it started so gradually and slowly. Uh, but I would say from the time that we really got serious about it, started thinking about it, and started trying to put something together, it probably uh, took about uh, three years, which actually, according to other projects of, that are similar, uh, took a lot less time. It was a definite grassroots effort. Yeah, mm -hmm. it was. Yeah. yeah, yeah. There was a core group that met on a regular basis um, initially to get things started. And yeah. then we did have um, every month, after the interest level was there, was determined that it was there, um, every month we would have a meeting for anybody, anybody around the lake that was interested and wanted to get information, see any kind of updates and changes that were made. Um, the Roy Wingen over at the Shady Acres Resort had a restaurant, and he'd open up his restaurant. We could have the meetings there, and it was kind of a standing meeting time and date. Or yeah, that was the third or fourth Monday of the month, and so we had that ongoing. And then also um, after we had a few meetings and the project was proceeding, they we started to send out an email once a month mm -hmm. with updates for people that couldn't attend meetings for whatever reason. Um, so the city, of, city of Fairbo, um um, we, I guess first we started working with the township because they're the local entity and we, we kind of hoped that we could keep it all local right here, but uh, the township really was not interested. Uh, so we did go to the city of Fairbo and went to set several city council meetings and um, uh, there was some resistance. Uh, about half of the city council was for it and the other half was against it, but luckily we had enough votes and uh, it, it turns out that the city of Fairbo had way more capacity for treatment than what they needed. And um, it was one thing that kind of helped push them over towards trying, and they, they kind of agreed to try us as a pilot project, because there's been other lakes in the past that have tried to do something like this, and the, the city has said no. Mm -hmm. So they, they uh, agreed to take us on uh, and try it for 10 years before they talked to any other lake in the area about doing a similar type project. <laughs> 